What's good YouTube, it's your boy Torrance and I'm back this week with another video. First things first, I wanna give a shout out to all my subscribers because we know film ain't never gonna die. This week, I'm doing a video about how I plan my fashion photo shoots. This video will be something for the digital and film folks alike. So get along with your digital counterparts. <laughs> but in this video, we're gonna talk about things such as inspiration, mood boards, finding models, finding locations, and a lot more. All right, before I get into sharing my little secrets about how I plan my photo shoots, I'm gonna show you guys a video of a photo shoot that I plan from start to finish. Check this out. Wait, 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 right quick, since you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right fast. All right, we back at it. Let's just get into how I actually got this concept how I came up with this concept. The first thing that you're gonna need for your fashion photo shoots is some inspiration. Like, you gotta have, you gotta be inspired by something. I'm not saying you always have to go look at someone else's work to be inspired. Use some things that are personal to you. Maybe it's a style of clothing that you like. Maybe it's a thing that you like to do, like you're an outdoorsy person, or it could be anything, but like just take a second and think about something that will inspire you. Find that inspiration. I say make it a personal inspiration because then you will have a little bit of your personality in all your photos and that'll contribute to your look. Okay, so once you have your inspiration, the next thing you wanna do is create a mood board. And basically a mood board is just gonna take your vision and make it a reality. Um, and what I mean by reality is you're gonna be able to share with other people and show them like, this is the type of outfit I'm looking for. This is the type of models I'm looking for. This is the location. These are the colors. And that's exactly what your mood board is gonna have. It's gonna basically set that theme. Me personally, I see the mood board as being the blueprint to your photo shoot. Um, this is basically gonna lay out all the groundwork of the things that you're gonna need. So just be very particular, be ready to share this with other people. Once you make your mood board, um, the next thing that I would typically do is I would find the location. To me, the location is, is king, whether it's gonna be in a studio, or on an actual outdoor location. Me, I prefer outdoor locations because I feel like they bring so much personality to your photo without you having to create sets and bring a lot of props. But if you are a studio person, at this particular point, you wanna start to find your props. You wanna find things that's gonna actually build and tell a story inside the studio for you. For the folks that are doing an outdoor thing, you just wanna find a nice location that's really gonna tell that story. I keep saying the word story because I think story is important. If not, you're gonna have a bunch of mediocre images that blend in with everyone else's images. So one of the ways that I find my locations is sometimes I drive around and I legit search for them. One of the things that I've been doing to save a lot of time, because I believe in saving time, is I use Google Maps. And Google Maps is pretty solid. You type in a certain location, you can grab the little street view dude, you know, you like grab him by his head and he like wiggles like you're torturing him. I don't know if he has feelings or not, but yeah. You grab that guy, you drop him on the street and he can see it around the street view. And you can find a lot of locations like this without leaving your house. And this makes location scouting way more efficient because uh, you just cut out the whole travel time thing altogether. Uh, once I find a location, Sometimes I'll go and do a follow-up scout and see you know, if the colors and everything is still the same based off of Google Maps. Or sometimes, man, you can be risky and just go there, but you risking it. So I gave you, you know, a few tips of how I plan my shoots, but now I'm gonna make a direct connection to the shoot I just showed you. So the inspiration for the shoot, like I said before, I wanted something that was elegant. I wanted a nice gown in this not so gown wearing environment. So I didn't want to see the model like out in the city or in a car or in a ballroom, in a bedroom. I wanted it to, to be a little bit more strange, but in a good way. 
my inspiration for the gown is because I actually like when women dress up. I like when men dress up. I like to dress up myself. So anything that's like black tie event or, you know, when a woman has to wear a gown, when a woman has to wear a gown to an event or a certain dress, I like events like that. I, I'm always looking for an event for me to wear a nice tie or, or a nice little tuxedo, you know, get my James Bond on real quick. You know, pull up in a little Austin Martin or the little BM and you know, and then she get out the car, her nice little gown, the camera pans from the gown all the way up to her. Like, yeah, that was my inspiration behind it. I really like those types of elegance. Okay, so after I had my inspiration, um, I created my mood board, which had some of the similar images, you know, revolving around just these elegant type situations, but happening in the forest. Um, the reason I wanted to rent a dress, but that's very expensive. There's a lot of red tape, like homie, if you, do anything to that dress. I mean, if you spill a thing of water on it and it makes a stain, you bought that dress. That's how some of those rental shops are and it's not really cheap. So um, I had to do a little bit of searching and I found one of my friends that makes costumes and I found out she makes dresses as well. So we ended up collaborating. And on top of that, she models. You know, she used to be a Redskins dancer. She still dances to this day, but she's a superb model. So. That was just amazing by itself. So once I made the mood board, I had my model, I had my styling. Now here's just the thing about styling. You usually wanna do that after you found your model and your location. Just do it that way. Um, a lot of times it's gonna be a little bit harder for you to find that style and then find the model to fit into it unless it's something that almost anybody can fit, at least from my startup perspective. That's my perspective. Um, so we had the styling, all we had to do is go on location and shoot. Okay, so with the location, uh, I found this location because I worked on a film with a buddy, but this location had one downside and there was a hike. And you have to think about things like this when you're looking for these amazing locations that tell these stories. How far would you have to hike with your equipment? I had, at the time, I had a strobe, I had sandbags, I had a stand, I had two cameras, because I had one recording, and when I was shooting with, I had a slider. Um, then on top of that, what the, um, whatever your crew needs. You know, if your makeup artist is coming, they're gonna have their stuff. You have to think about how far someone has to hike and if it's worth it. So always consider travel time in those locations. But hey guys, that's all I got as far as, you know, how I plan my, my photo shoots. Um, I should be coming out with another video about how to plan the shot. Um, that should be coming soon. Um, but, man, something was just trying to kill me. Um, fun fact about myself. Hope you guys ready. Cause this fun fact is gonna knock you out. So in college, um, I was kind of one of those dudes that rode a bike everywhere. I wasn't kind of—I was that guy that rode a bike everywhere. But during that time, I really, I really gained this appreciation for riding bicycles through the city. Uh, I like road bikes, um, like the real sleek ones that look really nice and they're really fast. Um, but I don't—I don't ride that that much anymore because I, I gotta drive to work. But hopefully one day. I can move a little bit closer to work and I can start doing a bike every day to work type situation. So that's a fun fact about me. As I always say, man, buy yourself a film camera and shoot. Peace.